let's configure PPPoE server in Microtik. But before we go through with the configuration of PPPoE server, let's take a look first at the usual connection types. Here we have a common scenario wherein we have a DHCP server that is providing IPs to DHCP clients. But there is no form of authentication. So as long as the client is within the network, it will try to discover and acquire IP information. And from there, it can use network resources such as route to the internet. Well, there might be a scenario also that we don't provide DHCP service in the network. So for example, in our clients, we have to manually configure the IP address. In another case, we have to manually key in our assigned public IP address given to us by our ISP. Here, this is the connection type that we will be configuring. We have a point-to-point -point over Ethernet or PPPoE server or in some other terms acting as an access concentrator. So in essence, similar to DHCP wherein there is a discovery stage, but the session or connection, if you will, will not be established without going through the authentication part. The client will need to provide authentication information such as username and password to the server. Only if the authentication succeeded, the connection will be established, thus you will have some form of security. So for one of these reasons, there is preference for the PPPoE connection type. Alright, let's configure PPPoE server in Microtik. So there are four steps in this demonstration. So we will start with the creation of an IP pool intended for PPPoE. Next, we add a PPPoE profile. We create the PPPoE secrets. And finally, we will add a new PPPoE server service to start or to enable our PPPoE server. Let's create an IP pool for PPPoE. We go to IP. Next, we go to Pool. So we go to Pools tab and click the plus sign to add a new pool. So we will put a descriptive name. So let's type here PPPoE-pool-5MB So for our IP addresses, so that will be the range for this pool. So we have 10.5.0.10 up to 10.5.0.250 So of course we could have a bigger range but again this is for example purposes only so we'll click apply and we'll click OK. OK, we have uh, our first pool. Let's add a new one by clicking the plus sign. So again, we'll put in a name, PPPoE-pool. This time it's dash 10 MB. So for our range of addresses, it's 10.10. .10 that's zero dot ten up to ten dot ten dot zero dot two fifty. Okay, so this is in order. So we have name and addresses in our range. So if all is well, let's click apply and click OK. So there you go, we have created our IP pool for PPPoE. Okay. So let's close this one and for second step we need to add new 
PPPOE profile. So we go to PPP menu. We go to the profiles tab. As you can see, we have default profiles. So let's click the plus sign to add a new PPP profile. Let's go to general tab. We need to put in a descriptive name. So PPP OE dash profile dash 5 MB. So for our local address, so this will be the IP address of the PPPOE server. So that will be 10.0.0.1 for this example. For the remote address, you will select the pool. Okay, so we'll configure or leave the DNS server later. So under protocols, so we might use encryption, but for now we'll leave as default. For limits, so here we can put in a rate limit. So anyone will connect or use this profile will have this rate limit. For our example, it's 5M slash 5M for receive and transmit. Let's review our first profile. We have a name, the address, and the remote address, and the rate limit configured. So click apply and click OK. Okay, that's our first PPPOE profile for 5MB. Let's add one more by clicking the plus sign. So to repeat the steps, we go to general and type in a descriptive name. So this will be for our 10MB profile. For the local address, we'll use the same one, 10.0.0.1. For the remote address, so we scroll down to the 10MB. For the DNS server IP, we'll leave it for now. So you can use, use encryption. For now, it's default. So for the rate limit is 10M slash 10M. So hold on a bit. We'll delete the B, 10M slash 10M for the receive and transmit. So we now have our PPPOE profiles in place. We have one for 5MB and we have one for 10 MB. Okay, so we'll go to the third step, which is to create PPPoE secrets. We go to secrets tab and we click the plus sign. So this will be the username. So for this example, let's have user1. So we key in a password. So as this is an example, let's Make it simple. So if you cannot uh, view or if you want to review your password, you go to settings and unhide the passwords by unchecking. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for service, we'll select PPOE. For the profile, let's assign this user one to the 5MB profile. Let's leave the other information without anything so click apply and click OK so now we have our first user user 1 so let's add more so click plus sign and add another user so user 2 still the same password 1 to 8 service is PPPOE but this time, the difference is it will be assigned on a different profile. So still the other settings here, let's leave it unconfigured. So click Apply, click OK. We now have our PPPOE secrets or users in place. Of course, you can add more in the future if the need arises. So third step is done. We'll go through the fourth step, which is to add a new PPPoE server service. So let's click plus. As always, for service name, we put in a descriptive name. So PPPoE-service1. For the interface, so this is the interface wherein the PPPoE server will run. 
So in our case, we don't have any interface particularly. So let's try 2 and 3. Ether 2 and 3 for our PPPoE interface. So for now, we'll leave that. And we we'll go to the bridge menu. And quickly add a PPPoE bridge by going plus sign. And renaming it to a descriptive name so pppoe dash bridge so our bridge logical interface is done let's click ok so now the bridge is running without member ports so we need to assign the ports so we go to ports tab plus sign and as for our example we will use ether 2 and ether Three. So let's add one by one. Ether2 is a member of the PPPoE bridge. And secondly, the Ether3 as the member of the PPPoE bridge as well. So we have Ether2 and Ether3 as our member ports of the PPPoE bridge. Of course, you can add more in the future, but for now, we are happy with those two interfaces. So now we can correctly assign to the interface PPPoE bridge. So we have some setting here. So one session per host allow only one session per host. So if a host tries to establish a new session, the old one will be closed. So authentication, we have some check here for MS CHOP2, CHOP1, CHOP and PAP. So let's leave it as default so click apply and click ok so we now have our PPPoE service running on the PPPoE bridge if you can remember I leave the DNS server field blank during the setup of PPPoE profile as I will try to illustrate a point. For some setup, it will work without any DNS server configured because as you can see in this diagram, the PPPoE client that will receive the supposed to be DNS information is also acting as a DHCP server. As long as in the DHCP server configuration, it will configure a public DNS or another DNS server other than itself but there will be a problem if this pppoe client will act as the dns server and provide this information to the dhcp clients let's edit instead our pppoe profile now with the dns server ip information so let's go to the profiles tab and select one of the profiles We'll go to the general tab and on the DNS servers we type in our preferred DNS server for this example let's type the quadruple 8 and the quadruple 9 9.9.9.9 let's click apply and let's click OK and we do it on our second profile so the same DNS server 8.8.8.8 and we Add in a second one, 9.9.9.9, click apply and click OK. So DNS server IPs are configured. So let me show you one thing about our PPPoE bridge interface. So this is a bridge. So this bridge don't have any IP address configured. So there is no IP information. So let me give you a quick look on the PPPoE client. So in the interface tab, so we have a running PPPoE client interface. On the dial out tab, so we type the username and the password as well as check the use peer DNS. So we acquired an IP from the address pool of the PPPoE and acquire the DNS servers from the configuration. 
let's go over to the PPPOE server so on the PPP menu so on the interfaces we have a dynamically running PPPOE interface so you can see the name with a user one under active connections tab so you could see user one is connected with the uptime so under the queues you will see that there is a simple queue dynamically added or created with a following upload and download limits so for this case it's 5m so as a recap in this configure PPPOE server in Microtik video so we have gone through the usual connection types so of course we have our DHCP connection type as well as static connection type and we discuss briefly about the PPPOE connection type so from there we have some reasons why we are using PPOE because of the authentication reason as one of the uh, reason for that so now we move towards the configuration of the PPPOE server so there are four steps so we create an IP pool for the PPPOE we add a new PPPOE profile so of course you can create more profiles as we create more pools for that particular profile so we create PPPOE user names or the term is secrets so username and password and with the assigned PPPOE profile by then we add a new PPPOE server service and tied it to a running or an interface so you might also add it on a single interface so we don't need to really create a bridge interface but for our demonstration we have created a bridge interface with two member ports it is also possible to run two or more PPPoE server on that particular bridge interface with the service name parameter to differentiate so I hope you find this video about configure PPPoE server in Microtik helpful and as always I would like to thank you for viewing